So it's time to check, rack, and bottle that nettle meat. I wonder if it's any good. This is going on like six weeks now, almost six weeks. So what do we do? We're going to take a reading, see where it's at, find out what it's doing, see how it's going. Yeah. So first I'm going to remove the bung and airlock. And one thing that you might notice is, you probably can't see it from here, but there is gunk up in there. The croissant went all the way up in this. This was a very, very active fermentation. I think we put this on a blow-off tube after the first day because it was just getting everywhere. And then it started to settle down, but it stayed very active. Even just in the last few minutes, I was watching bubbles still coming out. Now, we all know that that's not necessarily a sign of fermentation, but it means something is still active. So I'm going to bet this is probably not done, but it's good to get a reading and find out. Wow, it's actually quite clear. That's, that's awesome, and that color is amazing. Okay, this is sitting at 1.020 gravity right now, down from 1.112. It could be done. It may not be. Let me do a quick calculation and figure out what that gravity is. So my new simplified system, very, very simple, more or less accurate. It's consistent. Let's just say that. I take my original gravity, which is 1.112, minus my current gravity or final gravity, which is 1.020 gives me 0 0.092. I multiply that by 135. Why 135? Well, because as you go up past the 10% mark, there's more ethanol in the brew. Therefore, it actually changes the number slightly. So eh, it would be more complicated to try to figure out exactly. So I just use 135 all around. It's really, really close to the true accurate number. So that gives us a 12.42% ABV. Now we used 71 beast on this one. Therefore, we know that this could go to about 15. With 20 more points to go, it could get there. It could be just over 15%. It'll be about 15.5 if it went fully, fully dry. I don't know what it'll do. So uh, you know what, though? We're going to wait a couple weeks and find out. But we are past 10%, which is the first mark of the safety zone where you don't have to worry about making vinegar anymore. So because we still see bubbles, we think it might have a little bit more to go. Brian could give this a swirl without worrying too much about activating acetobacter. So I'm going to do that once we put the bung and airlock back on. <laughs> this is going to go sit for a couple more weeks. I'm going to put a bung back in it, put an airlock in it, and stare at it. <laughs> I thought you were going to give it a swirl. Oh, right. I'm supposed to give it a swirl. See how easily distracted you can be when you're looking at your airlock. At least I wasn't smelling it this time. Now, you've heard me talk about the swirl, but have you actually witnessed a swirl? It's really, really simple. I do it with the airlock on. That way you can do this with any brew pretty much up to any time before you rack it. You want to let it sit for like a week after a swirl before you rack it. Otherwise, you get all the sediment stuff. It's just not good. But it's a very simple thing. It is not a shake. It is literally a swirl. What I'm doing is creating a whirlpool inside there. And it degasses naturally. See that? As soon as it starts going crazy, I stop. Because you don't want to just blow out the airlock and all that kind of thing. But it gets all the stuff moving inside there. Okay? It does several things. Like I said, first, it gets everything moving. Second, it degasses. Now, why do you want to degas your brew? Well, here's the thing. Yeast produce gases and alcohols, okay? Several different kinds, by the way. The majority of the gases, or a lot of the gases, are CO2. And then the majority of the alcohol is ethanol, which is what the whole per point in home brewing is for. But the CO2 and ethanol are considered their waste products. That's right. We are drinking yeast poop. Well, you know what I mean. So the other aspect of that is the CO2. They don't want to swim in that. So the higher concentration you have of CO2, the more held back they actually might be with their actual brewing. So we want to swirl that up and get rid of some of that gas. I don't like to get rid of all of it because I do like to leave a protective layer of CO2 in here. However, one thing that we know from, you know, Mr. Wizard science class, right? Just dated myself totally right there. Or how about read, uh, um, the one with, um, what's his face from Star uh, Trek? Oh, he doesn't do. He did a science show. He did? Yes, he did. Tell me in the comments below if you know what I'm talking I about. I thought you were going to talk about Bill Nye. No, I, I don't like Bill Nye. 
I watched Bill. I've seen his show like twice. All right, all right. We're, and we're no, 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 it's okay. I watched it on YouTube. He was a jerk. <laughs> he was just rude and obnoxious. I was like, wow, man, that's just awful. Whereas Mr. Wizard, my biggest complaint was the way he always said carbon dioxide. It's carbon dioxide. He always said carbon dioxide. It was just like a really odd thing. I just picked up on that. I'm a strange guy. Learned a lot from Mr. Wizard, though. See, and that's all you do. You just give it a swirl, and I just will do that until, basically, I feel like stopping. But I just give it two or three swirls like that every few days, or every couple of days, or whenever I think about it. And that's the gist. That's it. That's all there is to it. But this is going to go back for more fermentation, because it's obviously not done yet. And uh, we'll check it on it in a few weeks. Now, Mead, it's so good, it made my hair curl. Um, so yeah, on July 6th, we actually checked this out and it came to 1.020, which means it could be really close to being finished. And today is July 21st, so we are uh, 15 days later, two weeks, yeah, whatever. I know I said a week, probably, but we're going to check it again and see if that gravity has dropped at all and probably rack it today, even if it's just really, really, really close to being done. So anyway, let's um, get started. So as always, the first thing we want to do is take a reading to make sure it is done or find out where it's at. Just kind of, you know, get a feel for it. Say hello, that sort of thing. Hello. How are you? You're supposed to, like, swirl around and throw that on the ground. Now. <laughs> See how many get that reference. Quite a few. I, I think a lot of people will actually get that. Now, remember, this is a first rack, so... You know, we want to keep solids out and all the lease and stuff like that if we can, but it's not the end of the, the end of the world if you got a little bit in there. Waste not, want not. Okay, so we're whoops. Looks like 1.020, so that's perfect. This has not moved at all. We'll have to save that. Let you know in a little while. However, what we want to do now is rack this. Now, normally, I would just dump that right back in here, but then I would upset the lease and make a mess, and then we couldn't rack it today. But since everything was sanitized in... <laughs> Um, I can do this because all these things were cleaned and sanitized, so there's there's no harm. That That's good stuff. Why do I want to throw it away? Now, a lot of people think you can just take this and pour it right in here. Well, you can, in theory, do that. It's probably not the safest way because you can get various things happen. A little bit of extra oxygen in there. Things can be bad. It is 12.4%, so it's probably not likely to turn to vinegar at this point, but it could oxidize and cause some odd flavors. So we like to actually do some racking. For racking, as always, we like to put the source vessel up elevated from the destination vessel. And for that, we're using Wibble, the white bucket of levitation. Hello. And the easiest way is with an auto siphon. If you just have a racking cane or a tube, you can do it that way too. Getting the siphon started is the questionable part for me because I don't really want to put my mouth on any of these parts or things like that. It's bad enough where we have to touch them, but there's really no way to not touch them. Our hands have been in sanitizer water though, so I would say they're as clean as they can be. I'm going to put this in about halfway down so as to not upset too much of that lease. And just a few pumps to get it going. And then I'm going to hold it. I don't always hold it, but there's an inch of lease in here. If I just put that all the way to the bottom, it's going to suck it up. And I don't really want to do that. See this nice clear color? I'd like it to stay that way. Now, in an effort to get as much out as we can, I am going to go close, but not all the way in. Okay, we've hit the bottom and I got as close as I dared go to that stuff. And uh, we got... Probably a good inch of sediment on the bottom that has a little bit of meat in there, but this is part of the process, if you will. There's always going to be some amount of wastage when you're doing this. So, as you can see, there is a little bit on the bottom here. It's mostly sludge, I'll be honest with you. If there was two more sips of meat in there, maybe that's all there is. Not really enough to worry about. Let's just get this out of the way. 
And at this point, next step is put that lid on with an airlock. You want to keep this under airlock. A lot of people seem to think that once you go into this conditioning or secondary fermentation phase that you don't need an airlock. Not true. There might still be off-gassing happening, which I'm sure there is, and you want that to get out. Those gases don't taste too good, and that's part of the aging process as well as the actual aging process is going to happen. And what is aging? It's just when all these flavors mellow together, some of the fusels and off-flavor things mellow out. They really do. I hate to say they go away like a miracle, but they kind of do. <laughs> um, whereas the other things, the sugars and the alcohols will mix together and mellow and not be as harsh. And that's most of what aging is. But we also promised you a taste. So I've smelled this already. I'm going to let Derek take the first taste because I'm really curious. It smells like iced tea. Like if you make ice a tea and let it cool, that's what this smells like. But it has a sharp, L a little notes, bit of grassy note. But... Which I'm going to attribute more to the nettle than I am going yeah. to to the alcohol. It's kind of interesting. I mean, it's a decent alcohol content on this, and it has our preferred range of sweetness at the 20 points above neutral. So I'm really curious how this is going to come out. This moment might decide if this is a drinking mead or a cooking mead. Okay. It smells nicer than it tastes. <laughs> I like it more than Brian does, obviously, by his expression. It has some weird herbaceous notes. And yes. I'm thinking that's because we're not used to drinking nettle tea, so we're not used to the essence of nettle. I think it'll get better in time. So we're going to let this sit for a while, and we'll be back. And you can see the the airlock is already going, that's degassing because this is totally done. And this is why I always tell people, do not count bubbles because if I if I was counting bubbles, I'd say, oh, I restarted fermentation. No, I didn't. No. There's nothing left to ferment, really. I think that's, like Brian said, it's just degassing. And to we moved me, it. that's a good sign because that means this headspace now is being filled, being filled with, with CO2. CO2. That was something else I wanted to talk about. Which will protect the brew. People have been freaking out about the amount of headspace. This is a fairly safe amount of headspace, okay? If it was down to here, I'd be worried because now there's a large amount of air in contact with this brew. The fact that it's degassing makes it where even that would be relatively safe. The fact that there's only this much, it's fine. One of the major worries when you have a lot of headspace is making vinegar or activating acetobacters because they need oxygen and alcohol and we have oxygen we have alcohol but they also start slowing down and not able to do their thing past 10 percent alcohol content so we're at 12 we're halfway between they start not working and they die so it's not likely to make vinegar but as i said before a little bit of those off flavors could happen from oxidation oxidization if you were to allow too much headspace which probably not an issue here. So something I like to tell people all the time, relax. <laughs> it's okay. People freak out all the time. Just let it go. So we're going to give this some time and then we'll be on to bottling. Okay. So like two and a half months ago, we started the nettle mead. Then I guess it was a little over a month ago, we checked on it. And now just a couple weeks ago, we racked it. So today it's time to give it that final check just to make sure it's done, 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 done then we're gonna rack it to a pitcher and we're gonna bottle this so here we go if you've watched this video this long you know what i'm about to do so we'll just go through it okay looks like 1.020 just like before which means this is done it is stable as long as i don't dilute it add anything more to it it's gonna be like this forever it'll stay but as always, gotta take a little taste. Let's put that over here for a moment. Let me have that picture. Now, if I pour this back in here, there's a possibility of any lease that's at the bottom billowing up, then I can't really rack today. And it kind of ruins the whole video and we have to do it another day. So I don't want to do that. So instead I'm pouring it into the pitcher. Now we're getting ready to rack this. And to rack it, you've seen me do this already. We're just going to use a wibble white bucket of levitation for those that didn't know and i'm just going to literally put this up on top of here 
This is our source. This is our destination. Siphoning, very simple gravity feed with a little bit of a vacuum t type of thing going on. Put it about halfway in, get it started. I don't believe there's a lot of lease here. Nope. I'm just going to put it all the way to the bottom and let it fly. Not much lease in this at all. I think we actually removed most of that when we racked it the first time. This is why I have the two rack rule. This counts as a racking, even though it's not really a true racking because we're mostly just moving it to a pitcher and then taking that pitcher and putting it into bottles. So we're immediately racking it. Some people would just bottle right from here and that's fine too. You can totally do that. We find that doing it on video, if there's any extra sediment at this stage, we can eliminate that and put it into the pitcher right away. And it just saves, it's an extra step that saves us a step, if you will, and keeps a clearer brew so that I can talk and use my hands while this is happening. <laughs> We were just noticing something. Not only is there very little lease, there's no lease on the bottom of this. Pretty much no sediment at all. That's irregular, you might say. I mean, I see maybe a slight, slight, slight film, but that's very unusual at this stage in the game. Maybe in just the center now that it's clearing out. Yeah, just a tiny little bit there. Yep. Oh, yep. okay. I see some now. There's a little, I mean, 10% of what we usually see at this stage. And I'm trying not to suck any of that up. There we go. And we lose half a cup, a quarter cup maybe. Not enough to worry about. Because it'd be kind of nasty anyway. Okay, now that this has been fully racked off and we calculated our gravities and all that sort of thing, I can tell you that it's 12.4% ABV. It also ended at a 1.020, which to some is overly sweet. To others is just sort of sweet. To us, it's normal. We like it that way in most cases. However, just know this, that actual number is kind of a relative thing because we've had some that at 1.050 and 1.060 were still just sweet enough and others that even at 1.000 tasted kind of sweet. So lots of things can affect the flavor. A gravity reading alone does not really give you a good indication of how sweet you will perceive the beverage is because depending on the acid and tannin profile of that beverage, higher sugars may be required for you to sense any sweetness or lower sugars may be required for you to sense sweetness. Yeah, what she said. So what I want to do now though is get this bottled. And again, it's the same thing as racking, really. We just use a bottling wand, which has the little thing on the end there so that you can put it in the bottom of the bottle, lets the liquid flow, and stop as needed. Could you hold that? It's easier with two people. If you only have one person, you have to hold this and then do the one-handed pump thing. I can do it, but, you know, there's two of us, so I'm going to do, do it the easy way and not knock this pitcher over. <laughs> We do have a dedicated video on just bottling, so we're just going to kind of speed up this process. One thing I want to say is look at that color. It actually looks like tea, and this is a tea mead. I mean, we made a tea wine, and we did another tea mead before and all that, so this is nothing new, make, using teas to make wine and, and mead, but that color is just awesome. It actually looks like tea or honey, like it really does, but uh, we did pour a little bit off. Now I'm kind of regretting how much I poured. I might have wanted to do more. There was just a little bit left there because said she'll drink that, so we're just going to have a little taste here, and... Right off the bat, it's very unusual. I, and I remember this from last time we tasted this. I mean, nettles, like, what do they smell like? You know, I don't really know. It's grassy, earthy, woodsy. Yeah, all with, those things. With a tinge of honey. <laughs> okay. That tastes a lot better than what I remember it from last time. Last time I think I made a face. It's still a little astringent from all the nettle tea in there, but 
it's really not bad. And I, I know that sounds like a weird way to describe it, but this is only a couple months old. I think with some age, this could actually become something really, really interesting. Yeah. The flavor is unique. It's hard to describe. I'm still getting that lemon and black pepper combination. Yeah. I get a little bit of lemon, black pepper. I also get something else. It almost tastes grassy to me. And that's the tea of it. The, the you know, I mean, nettles are a weed, you know, they're just a plant. And this is dried. So I, I'm not surprised that it comes across that way. A little bit bitter even. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think over time, this would be a great one. And I think maybe we should revisit this in like six months for an actual tasting. Because um, we have four bottles, so we can put them away and do that. So we'll mark these up, and in six months, you'll get to see what it tastes like then. In the meantime, thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.